Morning Year Sixers, hope we're doing alright. Um, welcome to today's maths lesson. What we're going to look at is a place value review. So we're just going to review and re revise what we've already been over with place value. Tomorrow's lesson will then be based on place value but be more problem solving that you'd be doing tomorrow. Um, so just have a quick look around me, make sure I've got everything. I've got my pens with me, got my rubber with me, got my vocab book that I had yesterday as well. Um, I've got my ruler, I've got to keep remembering to use my ruler as well. I've even got a hammer today just to make sure um, everything stays in one piece. Um, and I've also then got a nice cup of tea in a Back to the Future cup as well. So we're always winning. Right, so to start off with then, place value. I've got myself place value mat today to go through this. But just a quick recap as well that we need to th sort of think about are um, odd and even numbers. Okay. So, if you set out on your little piece of paper, just a little table that looks like this, and like that, and just give yourself a few seconds, pause the video, and just write down all the even numbers and all the odd numbers that you can. Okay, so hopefully you've done that. Um, so, even numbers then, starting with zero. Zero is the number, you've got to remember that one. Two, four, six, and eight. And as you can see, they're all in the two times table. And then your odd numbers then are every other number. One, three, five, seven, and nine. Okay, so with all these numbers, we can put them together in order and uh, create, sorry, all these digits, I should say, and, and create a, um, a bigger number. With that then, actually, I might go into a vocab book from yesterday as well. Here we go. I'm just going to think, I'm going to use that word quite a lot in this, which will be, I'll use blue, which will be digit. Because um, a lot of people use the word digit and numbers uh, instead of each other, but they've got a different meaning. So digit, also we could use uh, numerals as well. So um, these things are, there we go. These things are, um, I suppose the numbers, um, zero to nine. Okay, and then together um, we can put them in groups um, in some sort of different orders. So put them, put them in groups to then make bigger numbers. Okay, to make bigger numbers. So I might put an example there. Bigger numbers. Um, three, five, two, and four. So three thousand five hundred twenty-four. Okay. So I've got to remember to use that sort of language today. Um, just a quick something to think about as well is no matter which numbers you use, let's just use complete odd numbers. So let's look, start my 10,000s column. Actually, we can't see that, can you? So look in my 10,000s column here. Um, I'm going to put uh, 35,790, but I'm going to end in my ones column in an even number. Okay, because I've ended in an even number, that makes the whole, or should I say even digit, that makes the whole number an even number. Okay, even though I've used odd digits here, odd numerals here, the last one is even, so the whole number then is an even number. Okay, right. Um, so, show you this. Hopefully you can remember these uh, columns. I know you quite, you were all very good at this. So we've got our ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and finally the millions. And what we were working on as well was putting the commas in the correct place as well. So if you draw out yourself just a little grid in your book, and then I want you to put the commas just where you think they need to go. Okay, I'll give you a clue. There are two commas that you need to put in there. Pause the video, have a go. Right, so you should be looking at a comma here. And these are your sort of ones, tens, and hundreds. These then are your thousands numbers, so then you need to put a comma there as well, okay? And every number that you write has to include that comma. It makes it a lot easier for us to understand when you look, at, especially when you're looking at bigger numbers as well, all right? Um, so we can use this place value grid in different ways. We can put dots in there to, to represent a number, and then underneath we can then write out that number. So I've got five in my thousands column, put my comma in. Uh, I've got three in my hundreds column, one in my tens column, and then finally two in my ones column. So my number that that is representing 
is 5,312. Or if you want to as well, you could just put those digits straight in. So I've got two ones, one ten, three hundreds, and five thousands. Okay. Um, something you've got to think of as well is what is the max number of dots, of blobs, of cubes, of um, of anything that I can have in these columns. So for example, if I keep putting the columns in, the uh, columns in, the dots in the, in the same column, how many of these dots can I put in before it becomes too much, before there are too many dots at the party? Okay, so hopefully you've thought of in your head nine. Nine is the biggest numeral that I have. Before then, I need two numerals to make my number, which is my number 10, okay? So if I show you in the ones column, actually that makes more sense. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I then add another one, 10 ones, obviously we know that we write 10. Oh, that's one 10 that I've got and zero ones. So actually, if I end up with 10 ones, I need to show that by putting one in the tens column and having no ones. And it goes again, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I move on my 10th one will then come into the hundreds column, okay? So if I show you a number now with this place value mat, I want you to write that number down for me on your piece of paper and we'll check the answers afterwards. So, there you go. So write that number down for me. So, nice and easy, we should have ended up with Three in the hundreds thousands, two in the ten thousands, one in the thousands. My comma, remember that tells you where to say thousand. That's when my thousand numbers have finished. Now I'm onto my ones, tens, and hundreds. I've got five in my hundreds column, six in my tens, and one in my ones. So to say that number then, I cover that up. Three hundred and twenty-one thousand. That's what that comma is telling me to say. Five hundred and sixty-one. Okay, but what happens then if one of these columns has a zero in it? Let's put it there. How would I then write that number? Have a go writing that number. So uh, we then, a lot of people then go, okay, so I've got three, two, I've got nothing in my thousands, so I've got comma straight away, go five, six, and one. Well, that what that's showing me there, if we look at this place value grid, oh, that's telling me I've got three ten thousands, two thousands, five hundred, six tens, and one one. I've got to remember if I've got a zero in the middle of my number, I need to show that using a place value holder. Okay, so I still need to include my zeros in there, like so. So if that's the case, then write down this number for me. Uh, oh, wrong place. Write down this number for me, so I'll put three in there, two in there, and a one in there. You should have then ended up with three in the hundred thousands, zero in the ten thousands, zero in the thousands, two in the hundreds, zero in the one, uh, zero in the tens, one in the ones. Three hundred thousand two hundred and one. Okay, so just remember your place value. So let's put all this sort of review and knowledge in action then. Um, if I then had this number, um, 463,224, it's an even number because I've ended with an even numeral. So you've got that number down on your piece of paper. Now, I want you to add 100 more for me. What number have you ended up with? So you should have looked at your hundreds column and added one more in there. So I've now got, instead of two hundreds, I've got three hundreds. Okay. What about if I asked you then to add two ten thousands? So you should have looked at your ten thousands column. I had six, seven, eight. So now I've got eight ten thousands. What would happen then if I asked you to add two more ten thousands? Okay, so let's have a look. We've got eight to add two more would be nine and ten, ten ten thousands. But we've just realized that nine is the maximum you could have in that column. 
So if I've got 10 10 thousands, well, 10 times 10 is 100. So 10 times 10 thousand must be a 100 thousand. So that there is when I then go into my 100 thousands column. I've gone, I've crossed that barrier into the next column. So now I've got five hundred thousands. And remember, I've no longer got my ten thousands. I went from eight, nine, ten. You might see that more when you use column addition by saying eight, nine, ten. It's then putting that hundred thousand into the next column. Okay, and then the four at the one equals the five. Okay, so five hundred and three thousand three hundred and 24. Last question then. You might see questions like this uh, where you get given uh, a few numbers, so 6,292. Your next number well, might be 6,002, uh, no, 1,092. And your next number then will be 6,092. The question might be, what is the next number in the sequence? So then what you're then doing is looking at which column is changing. Well, 92, 92, 92 stays the same. I've got six, six, and six. The column that's changing then is the hundreds. My ones, my tens are the same, my hundreds, okay? Oh, it's decreasing. I'm taking something away. I'm taking away one lot of 100 every time. So I'm going down by 100 every time. But what happens then if I can't take away any more hundreds? What must I then do? Hopefully, you will then be able to tell me what the next number is. Post your answers inside the um, classroom, Google Classroom we've got going. I'll also post some revision work for you. Some of you might have done the work, because I say it is revision work, but I've also added on a little quick arithmetic test to do with place value as well. I'll see you tomorrow for the place value problem solving lesson. Bye.